Welcome to the Electricity of Life, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, Dr. Jerry Tennant began his first in a series of lectures on the intrinsic connection between physical health and well being and the complex electrical circuitry throughout the human body. The notion of the body as a, quote, electronic device seems at odds with conventional medicine in the 21st century. And yet it seems that virtually every day, we learn of new scientific breakthroughs, illuminating the effects of electric and magnetic fields on living cells and organisms. Recently, Dr. Tennant offered a series of presentations as part of a continuing medical education class for naturopathic doctors in Arizona. Dr. Tennant and his group have kindly granted us permission to feature these lectures in our Electricity of Life series. In the previous episode, Dr. Tennant began laying the theoretical foundations of his life's work, which has led to the establishment of healing protocols to restore the body's natural voltage. Specifically, Dr. Tennant explored the human body's capacity for regeneration, a phenomenon seen in some animal species throughout nature. As he continues in this initial lecture, he explains how the body's electrical circuitry and its ability to regenerate is governed by the available voltage in one's muscles and organs. To further explore Dr. Tennant's resources and materials, you may visit the links in the description box of this video. First of all, a notice, Tenet Institute is a private expressive association as defined by law and is under the direction of Jerry Tenet, MD, MDH, PSCD. This lecture is given under the auspices of my Arizona MDH license and not my Texas MD license, partially with the support of a contribution by Synergy Medical Group. Participation in the seminar uh, implies that the participant is given an acknowledgement of the rights noted above and others recognized by law and asserts 1st, 9th, 14th Amendment rights. Participation means I voluntarily license Jerry Tennant, MD, MDH, PSCD to counsel me with his Arizona MDH license. Disclosure of interests. I likely have a financial interest in patented and or trademark devices and books that carry my name. Now we look at our muscle battery packs or acupuncture circuits. Remember that our muscles are rechargeable batteries that are stacked one on top of each other, so like stacking batteries in a flashlight to form a battery pack, and every organ has its own battery pack. A stack of muscle batteries is what's been called an acupuncture meridian, and this example battery pack is what's called the spleen meridian. As you can see, it starts in the big toe, moves up the inside of the leg, a special branch goes to the female genitalia, then goes around to the back where it supplies voltage to the adrenals, the spleen and pancreas, and then up into the head. The spleen meridian loops to connect to the stomach meridian. Here it provides power to the macula of the eye. The spleen circuit connecting to the stomach circuit provides power to the thinking and motor part of the brain, the macula and cornea of the eyes, the thyroid and parathyroids, the breasts, the stomach, the male genitalia, the front of the knee, and back down to the big toe. The spleen stomach circuit supplies the minus 25 millivolts needed for all the organs on the circuit to work and also the minus 50 millivolts needed to make new cells to keep these organs repaired. These circuits supply the voltage for the entire reproductive system, the entire endocrine system, the thinking part of the brain, and the macula of the eye. When this battery pack cannot hold a charge, you have chronic illness in one or more of these organs. We have six of these loops of muscle battery packs that provide the ongoing voltage for all the organs to work and to repair themselves. When you have a chronic disease, you must ask two questions. Number one, what's the power supply to the malfunctioning organ? Number two, why won't that battery pack hold a charge? In this image, you can see the uh, six uh, circuits of uh, battery packs. And these uh, images are published in this book called Healing is Voltage, Acupuncture, Muscle Batteries, and Atlas. They are also in the book Healing is Voltage, Cancers on Off Switches. Now we have a main cable that goes around the body. It goes up the back and down the front. And this main cable is very much like the wire that goes from the telephone pole to the circuit breaker box in your home. So here you can see the human wiring system. 
we can see that the muscle uh, the muscle batteries from our arms go to these uh, lateral spots uh, that are above the diaphragm and the muscles uh, battery packs from the legs go to these lateral points that are below the diaphragm from these lateral points they go to the center and then they go uh, up the back and then they go down the front now after they circle around like this you have the ability then to move voltage from place to place and this explains the how herring's law works in herring's law we know that uh, it states that the body has the ability to move resources from one part of the body to another as needed and that it will particularly favor keeping the heart and brain working well we can see from understanding the body's wiring system how it's capable of doing that now as it goes up uh, this main cable um, then you can see there are small uh, muscle wires that go from the center down to the autonomic ganglia along the spinal cord and from those autonomic ganglia it goes to every organ in the body so this is the way our uh, voltage is distributed from our acupuncture muscle battery packs to every organ now it's of some uh, interest and importance to notice that these little wires that go from the uh, main cable down to the uh, spine to the autonomic ganglia is part of what's called the bladder acupuncture circuit so if you lose power in the bladder circuit then it's difficult to get voltage to any of the organs and generally speaking you will find that this uh, patient who's lost the bladder circuit will uh, have low total body voltage since it has trouble getting voltage anywhere now we have six loops of these muscle battery packs that provide the ongoing voltage for all the organs to work and to repair themselves and again I would emphasize when you have a chronic disease you must ask the two questions what is the power supply to the malfunctioning organ when we know the battery pack for example if you have heart pain we will know that the heart meridian has low voltage we'll also measure to confirm that that is correct and then we want to know why won't that battery pack hold a charge now while we're figuring out why the battery packs won't hold a charge we start the process of correcting and recharging them we correct the polarity of our muscle batteries with the scalar energy of the biotransducer and then we can correct the muscle battery packs with the electromagnetic energy of the biomodulator using handlebars and foot plates or patches now an additional concept to understand is a Tesla resonating circuit the father of electricity of course was Nikola Tesla and in the 1800s he developed what's called a Tesla resonating circuit what you do is you take a capacitor and wire it on a box to a uh, coil and thus you have this resonating circuit and all electronics are based on these Tesla resonating circuits they have the ability to, to basically talk from one to another now in the body half of our organs are um, capacitors and half of our organs are coils again the capacitor is a small battery and coils create impedance so in a Tesla red resonating circuit electrons flow from the capacitor to the coil until the capacitor is empty and then they flow back from the coil to the capacitor until the coil is empty and they oscillate back and forth so in the human body uh, our organs are wired together in pairs to form Tesla resonating circuits so the parasympathetic is always wired to the sympathetic the lung is always wired to the large intestine the heart is always wired to the small intestine the spleen is always wired to the stomach the kidney is always wired to the bladder and the liver is always wired to the gallbladder now because all of these things are tuned at our birth it's important to try to keep all of our organs because if you go in and remove part of an organ let's say you go in and remove your gallbladder well now the liver gallbladder circuit is no longer in tune with the rest of the body so the body tries to accommodate and compensate for that as best it can but it's never quite the same because you've lost one of your important Tesla resonating circuits so do the best you can to try to keep all of your organs 
In this slide, you can see again how these are uh, wired together and create these uh, electromagnetic fields, which uh, generate uh, the power and have the ability to talk to each other. And each of these circuits run at very specific frequencies. Now, it's well known in battery technology that if you drain a rechargeable battery to zero, it will flip its polarity. So if you look at a battery, it has a plus on one end and a minus on the other. So if you drain that battery all the way to zero, it will flip its polarity. In this image, you can see on the left, at the top of the battery, it's plus. But when it's drained to zero, the top of the battery becomes minus. Now, if you take a battery that's uh, and put it in upside down, into a battery charger, it won't take a charge. And so when you drain a, a, an acupuncture battery pack to zero, uh, it flips its polarity and therefore nothing that you do works. So many people have gone to and tried all sorts of different things when they're ill and either nothing works or nothing works very long. And it's because uh, with the polarity flipped, you can't uh, recharge it and thus you can't get the uh, have the the minus 25 millivolts you need for cells to work, and you certainly don't have the minus 50 millivolts that you need to make repairs. So how do we know if the voltage in an organ is low? Yes, sir. One of the things we obviously would like to know is what is a person's total body voltage and the voltage in each of their circuits. And to determine that, we use this device called Meridian Energy Analysis Device, or MEAD. So we have a computer program here. We put a ground wire on her hand. We tell the computer to start the program. And then we simply go and measure specific points. The long point, parasympathetic, heart, small intestine, sympathetic, large intestine. Now, cells are designed to run at minus 25 millivolts and you need minus 50 millivolts to make new cells when they wear out or get damaged. The Mead or Meridian Energy Analysis device makes an effort to measure the voltages in the acupuncture muscle battery packs. So you take the number it gets and divide it in half to get millivolts. So in this example, where you see the arrow, you see that the average voltage reads 30.1. And when you divide that by 2, you get 15 millivolts. So this uh, readout would suggest that this patient's total body voltage is 15 millivolts. However, this device cannot tell which muscle batteries are charged and which ones have reversed their polarity and cannot hold a charge. So we go through and identify those that have lost their polarity or flipped their polarity and I've circled those in this example chart. So in this example six of the 12 circuits have reverse polarity thus one must reduce the average voltage uh, by 6 over 12 or 50 percent. Thus this patient is really running at half of 15, of 15 millivolts or 7.5 millivolts instead of 25 millivolts that end of obviously running at seven and a half millivolts. They'll be tired all the time. Okay, so our muscles are rechargeable batteries and every battery is surrounded by a magnetic field that spins this direction around the positive pole. However, if you put something into that uh, magnetic field, it will grab it and spin it with it, sort of like throwing paper up into the wind. However, if the battery is discharged, it spins the other way, counterclockwise. So we can use that little trick to figure out if uh, which of the circuits in the body uh, have lost their charge. So to use the pendulum, what you do is you tune it to the person. You put the middle of the ball at one end of their palm and to the other side. So now that is tuned to her. So we'll wrap this part around my finger to make a coil and grab it right there. <clears throat> and then we simply put it into the various uh, poles of each circuit. So this circuit up here is called the gallbladder circuit. And you can see it spins counterclockwise, so it's discharged. This is the sympathetic system, also discharged. This is the 
large intestine discharged, small intestine discharged, stomach discharged, bladder discharged, liver discharged. And now we'll turn her face down, measure on the other side. Parasympathetic, discharged, lung, discharged, heart, discharged, spleen, discharged, kidney, discharged. So as you can see, every single one of her circuits is discharged. So there are, uh, there, it's well known in battery technology that if you take a rechargeable battery and you drain it all the way to zero, it flips itself upside down like that. So once you have a battery f uh, pack in your body flipped upside down, then it won't take a charge and it has to try to borrow electrons from the next door neighbors to uh, power the, all of the organs that are on that particular circuit. Well, obviously if it's borrowing from the next door neighbors, it doesn't work terribly well. So what we need to do is fix the batteries so that they will take a charge. Now there are two kinds of energy in the universe. Everybody knows about electromagnetic, which is uh, electricity, radio waves, that sort of thing. But there's another one called scalar. So when you use scalar energy, it will take your batteries that are upside down and turn them back up like that so that they can now take a charge. So we're going to do that for her. So we'll turn her back over again. So the biotransducer it puts out scalar energy and we can simply put it at the top of her head like so. Uh, the other option is we could actually lay it down like this so it doesn't matter whether it goes up the spine or down the spine. And when we put that in the scalar energy, we can choose any one of the circuits that are, is out. And so it's spinning counterclockwise, and when it corrects it, it will spin clockwise. Now one of the interesting things is, is when you correct one of these, you correct them all. What you're observing now is pure physics. If you take a steel rod and you wrap a coil around it and put power to that coil, you have what's called an electromagnet. By the way, notice it just corrected. See there? So, um, you take a steel rod, you put a coil around it, and power it, you have what's called an electromagnet. If you take another steel rod and put a coil around it, you have, but don't power the coil, and simply put that second one close to the first one, then the electrons will jump from the powered coil to the unpowered coil. And in physics, that's called induction. So that's actually how an electric motor works. So she's an electromagnet, I'm an electromagnet. And so when I get inside of her field, that energy or the information from or the magnetic field of which way the electrons are spinning in her coils actually is transferred to me, around through me to this, uh, uh, to this string and makes this spin the same direction as it's going through her coils. And you saw at first it was going the incorrect way through a coil, so it spun counterclockwise. But as it corrected, then it spun clockwise like so. So um, again, what you have just observed is pure physics. So now we'll go back and check her circuits again. Gallbladder's correct. Sympathetic's correct. Large intestine's correct. Small intestine's correct. Stomach's correct. Bladder's correct, liver's correct. So we've just now taken her batteries and turned them back up. But now that they're turned back up like this, they're still discharged, so the next part of the process is to use the biomodulator to charge her batteries back up, and then her organs will have the power to function and begin the process of healing. Now, the next thing to consider is that if you have a power outage, say a, a lightning thunderstorm knocks the power out at your home and the power company eventually turns the power back on, but you notice that your refrigerator still isn't working. It's, it may be because the, the refrigerator has a, its own 
circuit breaker and it flipped that circuit breaker so even though the power is back on then the refrigerator still in working. Well the organs are sort of like that they have their own circuit breakers so we're going to go back and check those so I can simply touch over an organ so this is the frontal lobe and it's working correctly parietal lobe and you see it's still out so our parietal lobe circuit breaks are blown temporal lobes are okay occipital lobes are okay pituitary is still out thyroid out esophagus okay stomach okay small intestine okay ascending colon transverse colon descending colon liver gallbladder heart left lung right lung the uh, bladder area the pelvic area all of those are turned back on except the ones you just saw so the what we have to do then is go back and put power into each one of those individual circuits so for example we would hold this over the parietal lobe and you can see it's still uh, not powered correctly just pause for a second okay. and now it just corrected then we do the other one also not powered it's not accepting the power and now it's turned back on do the pituitary do the thyroid and now we have to turn her over and uh, check the, on the other side So we look for occipital lobes, brain stem, lungs, heart, adrenals, and you see they're still out. Kidneys are okay. So she has a very common pattern, and that is it's common after you turn the main power back on that you'll see that the parietal lobes, the pituitary, the thyroid, and the adrenal glands are often switched off and you have to turn them on individually. Okay, this adrenal just turned back on. This adrenal. Obviously it's out. And now it's back on. All right. So what we've done then is found that all of her circuits, all of her, the power supply to all of her organs were switched off. That is, they had drained to zero and thus uh, didn't have any uh, power for those organs. We turned the main power systems back on, but some of the organs themselves were still had their uh, circuit breakers off. We've turned those back on, so now her body's able to accept the voltage. So we would simply now use electromagnet, uh, magnetic energy from the biomodulator with handlebars and foot plates and uh, charge her back up so that her batteries now have a full charge so her, her organ systems, her cells can go back to work and begin the process of functioning normally and she'll have the 50 millivolts available to make new cells where they're needed. Here you can see she is using the handlebars and foot plates to recharge the muscle battery packs. So why won't battery packs hold a charge? We've identified these five different reasons that uh, battery packs drain to zero. Not enough thyroid hormone because the thyroid hormone T3 controls the voltage of every cell membrane in the body and it also controls the total number of mitochondria while T2 controls the voltage in the mitochondria. 
Scars block the flow of voltage in a circuit if the scar touches the fascia wire. Dental infections act like a resistor as voltage throw, uh, flows through the tooth. Emotions are stored as magnetic fields and thus block the flow of electrons. And of course, toxins are all electron stealers. So let's take a look at those different things. Hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a very common problem and it's often underdiagnosed. Now the thyroid process begins up in the hypothalamus of the brain and is under control of adrenaline. It um, releases uh, a thyroid or thyrotropic releasing hormone, which causes the pituitary uh, to release thyroid stimulating hormone, which causes the thyroid to re release T4, which then uh, must be converted to the active form of T3 using iodine, selenium, zinc, iron, cortisol, progesterone, and glutathione. If you're missing one of these elements, you tend to make a fake hormone called reverse T3, which is sort of like a key that fits in a keyhole but won't turn the tumblers. Docs are trained to look at the TSH and to adjust uh, thyroid prescription medication uh, according to the TSH. Um, or to assume that the patient's capable of making a normal amount of thyroid hormone because the TSH is normal. Sometimes physicians will look at the T4 as well. But you can see from this diagram that the TSH and the T4 could be completely normal, but if you can't convert it to the active form of T3, you can be 80% deficient at the cell membrane where it counts and still have normal TSH and T4 blood tests. What you really want to know is how much reverse T3 you have, and you want that between 3 and 4, and the closer it is to 4, the better that you feel.